This is a tutorial for Forever and Always by Chrissy Ricker <clears throat> in the uh, Easy Rhapsodies and Reveries book. So I don't have a copy of the sheet music here, so I'm just going to be referencing the sample for the first page. Um, we can maybe take a quick peek at the second page as well, but I can't view the end of it very easily. So uh, you can maybe just work on the first page this week and go on if you feel confident. Okay, so <clears throat> I just wanted to go through and find the spots where we're gonna have to move because as always, that's gonna be the tricky spots. So I hope you've already had the, an opportunity to listen to it. Uh, so if you haven't, stop the video and listen to a recording. I have linked that in your lesson notes and then come back to this video and uh, pick up from where you left off. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of circle in the first line. We've got a couple finger twos there and notice that it is below the middle C. One step below middle C is B, so we are going to be tucking there. And you can decide whether or not you want to add the word tuck. Maybe that's an obvious move to you. If it's not, uh, be sure to add it in. Line two, <coughs> excuse me, very hoarse day. <coughs> Line two uh, does the same kind of thing. It also is going to tuck. However, this time it comes right back up again to finger one. So sometimes when we tuck, we carry, and I'll demonstrate this in the little video up at the top of the screen. Sometimes when we tuck with finger two, we continue the thumb down. But in this song, we tuck with finger two and then come back. So it's a bit of like a pivot versus um, a one directional movement. It's two directional, down and then back up again. Okay, now looking at line three, it looks like we are gonna have a couple moves here. This is going to be a shift because we did have finger two on D originally at the beginning of the song. And now we've got finger two on G sharp. And then right after that, um, we have to tuck. So we start with finger two on the G sharp instead of finger one because we want to avoid using a thumb to play a black note whenever possible. So we start with the finger two and then we are going to tuck up the piano. So you can label that one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me again, sorry. Um, looking at line four of the first page, there's no tucks here, first time. However, there is going to be, hey, look at they broke the rules already. <laughs> we are going to be using our thumb to play a black key, and that's going to be a shift up uh, to play the A flat. And keep in mind that G sharp, A flat are the same note. Why they are notated differently in these contexts, um, I'm not gonna go into right now, but they are the same notes. So just keep that in mind when you're moving, that you're not moving very much at all. In fact, you're going from having the two on the G sharp, tucking onto the one on the A, to just shifting your thumb down to the A flat. And when, when I do it that way, and I'll show you a big screen version as well, it's easy to understand why they suggested finger one. Okay, looking at the left hand for page one, we're going to again look for the moves. So once again, it's all about the thumb moving. And this is a really good, uh, really good practice for thumb moves because a lot of times it's not intuitive to just move the thumb, but it is in fact the easiest and it will become intuitive as you get more confident. So when we start off the song, we've got our thumb on the, on the G and it stays on the G for the second measure, but then it does move onto the A and we play that skip with fingers one and two. So even if you don't wanna mark that you shift the thumb, please circle the one there, just as an alert to yourself that you are moving at that spot. Same thing with the last measure, the thumb moves back. So if I demonstrate that, so it was G, A, G, and that's the only moves you're doing. Other than that, just follow the fingers that they've given you there. Looking at uh, line two, Pretty much the same as line one other than we just hold the last two chords. Scroll down to lines three and four. Now we were in C position to start. We are moving to a new position at the beginning of line three. This is look appears to be D minor and once again it's the thumb that's going to move when we get to our second measure. So it's going from here to there. Now, this one's a little bit different. Here you can see that the thumb is actually consistent. It's gonna stay on that B across uh, measures 10 to 11, and the other fingers are actually going to move. So it's gonna go from this to this. So it's like you're following your thumb. So maybe 
um, right in those fingers, one, three, five, sorry, that's so huge. You can make your smaller <laughs> and circle the three and the five this time because this, this time the three and the five are following the thumb. Now it's kind of doing sort of a, this upwards pattern. So if I play it, you can hear it. You can feel that, that upward rise and we can kind of track it through that top note. So it goes A, B, 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 C, C. And that gives it this, this strong, uplifting feeling. Um, so now, speaking of that top melody line, the thumb is going to move again. Now here they say to use finger three on the bottom. And you can. However, I don't think you need to. Because right now we have the three on the G sharp. It makes sense to just use finger two on the A, because that's already what's there. So I would scratch out the three and put a two. And then you can play the last chord here with one and three. And that one you're not moving for, other than perhaps just moving your third finger from the G sharp to the G natural. Okay, then what's kind of nice about that is that you're pretty much in position for the last line. Now this line we are moving a teeny bit for, so notice the top note is C here in measure 12, and the top note is C in measure 13. So we're going to follow the thumb again this time. So if I give you the fingers 1 and 5, which I'm sure is obvious to you, but I just want to track which part of the hand is moving at which points. So the 1 is staying this time, and this time the 5 is moving up one note to F. It was previously on E, now the finger 5 is on F. And it just stays all the way through that line. Okay, now I'm probably going over it in far more detail than you need, but I want you to be aware of all these things because it makes it a lot easier to say read. Now, I would play through hands separately first, which I will demonstrate. And then before you put it hands together as written, I would play the left hand as whole notes in each measure, just to give you time to think um, and to reduce the amount of uh, stresses, I guess. <laughs> so I guess that's saying the same thing twice. But um, when you have to play two different chords, for example, at the end of line three uh, in the left hand, then play them both. But when they're just repeating themselves, for example, measure 10, then just hold it and make it a whole note. So I'm going to demonstrate each of those steps and then we will move on from this piece. Uh, quick mention for page two that I would recommend following the same steps. So going through, finding any spots where you need to move, doesn't look like you really do have to move much, at least not in the right hand. Uh, left hand, you've got to move chords a little bit, but the moves are fairly straightforward because they're going from C, A, F, G. It's just moving chords in root positions. So you're not like stretching, squishing, stretching, squishing, and nothing fancy there. Okay, so stopping the shirt, and I'm just gonna demonstrate first bit of this piece. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay. The song is played with pedal. Uh, feel free to add pedal just to the left hand for now until you're feeling confident. So I'm going to demonstrate the right hand first. Once again, just keep your wrist really flexible and use your arm. Move around. To as you play it. So don't stay in one spot. I'll show you the difference. So this is a rigid wrist and this is a flexible wrist. Just keep moving. It'll really shape the phrase and it'll it'll ensure that you stay relaxed. Okay, the next line. And I didn't uh, make a note of that. I just realized that, but you do move your thumb. single notes. So I'm doing a full circle on each note. And 
we've talked about doing wrist bobs up and down, but that creates a little bit more of a marching wooden sound. If you use the circles on each note, it keeps that flexible wrist going, but it also shapes the phrase a little bit more. It creates more of a horizontal movement across the piano and less vertical, less just down, more across, but it keeps that wrist moving. So give that a try. And then left hand, I'll try it with pedal. So pedal you'll just lift at the beginning of each measure. want to move in measure 13. Okay, um, as far as hands together goes, I'm just going to demonstrate this with the holding of the left hand. I'll do it with that pedal.